most people don't know this about me, that I had a goal to have a million dollars in the bank by the time I was 30 years old. And as a former workaholic, who was just a product of what I was taught from the education system, from my mom, from the product of the people around me, I damn near killed myself in order to reach that goal because I thought that was success and that was the key to happiness. I worked 14 hours a day. I declined going on trips with friends or to concerts. Everyone was wearing these expensive designer jeans at the time, and I just wore plain jeans. I didn't have the latest bag. I ate a lot of top ramen, and I achieved this goal, like seven figures in my bank account by the time I was 30. But within three months, almost all of it was gone. All of my hard work, all of my sacrifice, all the stress, all of this whole vision and fantasy I created for myself was gone that fast. Here's the story. If you're tired of hearing the same old basic mindset and motivational fluff talk, you've come to the right show. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast where we dish on everything from managing that crazy brain of yours to manifesting abundance to my straightforward, actionable steps that will make you major money online. Now, I'm not your typical multimillionaire entrepreneur. It takes a small village to keep my anxiety and depression in check. I'm inherently disorganized with an intense obsession with office supplies. Your girl here is a digital marketing content expert who's generated over $200 million in sales. I promise by tuning in twice a week, you will get a much needed refreshing dose of truth, clarity, and cash making advice. Now let's get to it. What up my people, my posse, my fellow crazies. This is your host, Tiffany Carter. And This is the show that is going to help you grow your business, your bank account, that big, beautiful brain of yours, your abundance, your relationships, and everything in between. I felt I needed, for those of you who are watching here on YouTube, Project Me TV, and you need to come subscribe and see what's going on over here on the tube. If you're more of an Apple Spotify listener, you know, it's nice to like mix some things up. Plus, A lot of people, especially like my neurodivergent peeps, those of you who are easily distracted, people find it really helpful to comment in real time while watching the show, whether it's an interview or I'm here solo. And I read as many and reply to as many as possible as well. So it's a little bonus over there. But I had to change into my money robe look for this episode. So there's been an outfit change from the intro. I feel really vulnerable, uncomfortable, just awkward even sharing this. And I've been interviewed and I've shared snippets of this story, but I'm going deep with you guys on this because I know how many of you will benefit from knowing what my plan would be if I had to start all over again. And guess what? I had to start all over again. And first, I want to talk about a perspective shift if you're starting over in any area of your life. Maybe you recently have gone through a breakup or a divorce. Maybe you are in the plans of leaving a career you've been at for years or a corporate job for years and you can't do it anymore. So your big change is on the horizon or you're currently navigating it or you're doing a pivot in your business. And yeah, it is lonely. It is terrifying. And even if you have great support around you, no one can take that feeling away. So just know that's absolutely normal and part of it. And this is why so many people stay stuck and don't make a move. But I can tell you, there is no worse feeling than when you go to bed every night and wake up every morning knowing you didn't even go for it. You didn't give it your all. And then there's people around you, whether you have kids, there's other people you influence, other women, other people in your community. How how empowering would it be for them to see you doing something different 
going against the grain, actually making a shift and saying, this doesn't work for me anymore. And I'm going to go into the unknown and I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to go into an area where there is no certainty and it's so unfamiliar, but I've got to do it in order to reclaim my freedom, reclaim my joy, reclaim my peace of mind, reclaim my finances. And you're not meant to stay in one spot your entire life, although a lot of people do because they can't get out of their own way. But it's funny what how God works, how the universe works. Some of you have been forced into making pivots and forced into making shifts through pain. You've gotten hints, you've gotten uh, nudges, you've gotten even shoves, and you still stayed so rigid and so stuck out of fear until it reached a boiling point. And just know that happened for you, even though it's ugly, it happened for you. You know, when I saw that I almost all that money was gone, that I thought at that time, my belief system, which is what I was taught, is that you have to greatly sacrifice to be successful. You have to outwork everyone, especially if you're a woman in the, you know, working world and that was modeled to me by my mom. That was reinforced in corporate America when I was a newscaster. Then it was even more enforced with media. And I was surrounded by people who just like, you better get in before the boss gets in and you better be the last to leave. And if you really want it, you know, you've got to work hard and hard work pays off and force, hustle, grind and push. And so I did. And I sacrificed my wellness, my mental health, my physical health. And quite frankly, like my relationships, you know, I didn't have, um, I have to own my part in it. You know, when we're in that kind of a space and we're not truly living our best life and living for ourselves and pursuing the life that we want, even if we don't yet have it, but the pursuit of it puts us in such a different energy and such a different mind frame. And to think we don't affect those around us, to think we're not repelling abundance around us within us being in those nervous system states is absolute ignorance. I know that I stopped getting invited to a lot of things because, oh, Tiffany is going to be too busy. Tiffany's working. Tiffany is going to say no. And in, you know, romantic relationships, at a certain point, the other person doesn't feel that important, especially when it wasn't even, I wasn't even doing this growing a business. You know, like at least if you're growing a business, someone could go, I get it. Like she has a business, like, you know, I can accept that. Like, you know, it's all on her. Da, 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 da. No, I, I had this goal being in corporate. So that's even more crazy. I had this goal being in corporate because there was even less in my control. I was in the sales realm in pharmaceutical sales. I was a national sales trainer, won awards, all the things. And they said, there's really no cap on how much you can make in terms of bonuses. But there really is because the way they... Uh, make your metrics and key markers and hitting certain points, you really do have a cap in, you know, and maybe you can have a year or two where you break through their matrix to keep you at a certain point, but then they'll make sure the year later, your goal is set so high, you can't make it. So those of those of you who've been in corporate, those of you who've been in corporate sales, you guys know to amass a million dollars in your bank account through a corporate job is wildness. So you can imagine how much I was working. Now, it wasn't just from um, my corporate job that I was making this money. So I, when I started, I would say around 23 is when I started passive income. And I didn't have a bunch of money or anything, but I would save like little bits and I would put it into an investment fund, put more in an investment fund. So that money made more money, that made more money, that made more money. And so I would say the first thing you need to hear is even if all you have is, let's say, $100 a week, 
that you could put in, put it in because it really does add up when you're putting that in an investment fund. But I digress because you need to make sure this is a trustworthy investment fund, not one that I fell for and I got to own my role in it. That's why I talk about fantasy marketing to you guys. I fell for the, you know, age old saying of if it's too good to be true, it is. And I, I really trusted this thing before I go on to the story and tell you guys exactly what I would do if I was starting from scratch today. Uh, one of the things is you need to make sure you are prioritizing coming to my annual live event that's completely free, three days to make bank online in your business. This is a scene. This is next week. It's next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I only do it once a year. You don't want to miss this. This is not some circle talk fest. This is not some selling fest. This is not some janky, cheesy webinar. This is my way of giving back. Do I open a special pre-launch for my signature program that is only offered once a year? Yes, I do. But that's secondary. You implement what I teach you in these three days. I don't care where you're at in your business. You haven't started one. You're 15 years in. You are going to make coin. So that thought in your head of where do I even start? I do want to have more streams of income online. I do want to be able to grow an audience where people want to buy things that I recommend or buy things that I sell. Like, where do I even begin? This is it. Plus, we're going to go into discussions on what to do when people say, like, I can't afford it. I don't have time. All those kinds of things. And what to actually do that's an integrity and that is not manipulative and that's in no no sort convincing energy. So it's projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash make bank. You can swipe up. It's in the show notes. It's also here on the description in YouTube. We reach max capacity every year. For some reason, people don't believe me on this or forget this part. And on day one of the training, people are going to try to get in and then be very upset that they can't. I have been getting DMs asking about replays because some of you are in time zones where it'd be the middle of the night or you have a jobby job and there's no way you can do it at that time because I love you and I want you to have this as long as you're signed up. You do get access to the replay each day for 48 hours and then it disappears. And I'm doing this to get your procrastinating out of the way. So you can procrastinate for one day on it and then it's like, oh God, I have to watch this or it's going away. I'm doing this for you because that's what I would need in order for me to do it. What's so crazy is even when we know something is going to absolutely help us, benefit us, make us money. It's a good thing. We still do these weird procrastination behaviors on it. It's so insane how we operate. I just, I think it's a lot of it comes from just being overwhelmed in the grand scheme of things in the world. And I promise you, I am making this fun and there is no way your energy won't be lifted and you'll walk away with a new, renewed, refreshed sense of I'm doing this damn thing. All right. So make sure you get in there. Now, let's talk about this investment thing. And I'm not giving you guys financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I need to say that my lawyer says so. I had a very dear friend of mine, someone who I looked up to who was super, super wealthy. It was the wealthiest person that I knew at the time. So when I had the million dollars in my account, I was like, oh, shit, what do I do with this? There was a split second when I saw the seven figures. I was like, wow, that's cool. But it lasted seconds and it went immediately to a sinking feeling of oh my God, what do I do with this? I'm not qualified to have this. Oh my God, how spoiled of me to have this. Look at all these people who are starving, these people who are struggling. Like, I don't even have kids. I mean, it, it all the money stuff came up and I had not done work around money. 
I, I wasn't even aware of the stuff that I teach you guys now. So all of that stuff started spinning. Tiffany started writing checks to anyone who wanted money from me, basically. And let me tell you, there's something weird that happens that when people know you have money, even though I didn't go around telling people I didn't even it's like I was posting stuff on social media, but like the vultures can smell it. And I was writing checks because I felt like in order for me to have this money and still be a quote unquote good, caring person, I had to give it away. Just mind blowing. And so I was giving a lot of it away. So that's how a chunk of it went very quickly. And these were people that had no intention of giving it back to me. And this friend of mine who I knew was really wealthy, I was like, I need to ask someone what to do with this, like where to put this money. And granted, I already had an investment person, you know, that I was I was putting money into an investment account since I was 23. But to me, this level of money required like an advanced person. Okay. I made this up. Okay. That it needed some special person. And I took a referral and I didn't vouch for the referral myself. And here's what I want to say about referrals. And I'm very cautious with referring people, by the way, I heavily vet people, but someone can change. So you can refer someone that maybe you used two years ago or that you even used last week, but they can have a full spiral for all, you know, they could become addicted to something. They could go into self-sabotage. You could have a personality conflict. There's a lot of stuff that can go on. And I'm still a human being. And so was this person who referred. It wasn't like they had ill will. I want to see Tiffany lose her money. They had goodwill. But it's my responsibility to vet someone and keep someone honest and do check-ins. Same with you guys. So it can't just be, oh, I saw this great program online and this person's making all this money and look at all their followers and look at all their engagement and they must know what they're what they're doing. You also have to own your part that your fault, you fell for the fantasy marketing, right? You fell for the um, lose weight easy, get rich easy. And that's the first thing I want to say is if I was starting from scratch, I would be much more intentional and deliberate with who I invested my money in and whose advice I took in. And I would make that a uh, grouping of people very small that expression and my internationals i'm sure there's a version of this expression i love hearing about these when you guys message me and tell me oh yeah and you know and in my country we say this and it means this but it's too many cooks in the kitchen right like you you can't have too much input puts you guys in a state of overwhelm and i and when we're nervous and we're uncertain about something we tend to like want to pull everybody and take as much information as possible because we think the more information, the better, you know, and then we end up spiraled with all this information. I would rather you take in less information, but spend more time qualifying people and put the rest of your energy into implementing the information. It's safe to keep taking in information. It's safe to keep studying. It's safe to stay in the spot of quote unquote figuring it out, but you won't make any money that way. So this person invested almost all of this money into gold mines that were like high risk or perhaps didn't even exist. Okay. I don't want to get into all the weeds on it. I didn't read. There was, I signed stuff. And I didn't read it because of my money wounds. I was consistently told in very micro ways and in nonverbal ways that I wasn't that smart by my mom, the narcissist who went to Harvard. So on one hand, I I never I was complimented on like my looks. I could be complimented on getting certain grades on a test, but I certainly was never told I was smart. And am I conventionally book smart? Did the studying and school did it come easy to me? No, it did not. But how much of that was attributed to 
not being told I was smart, right? Because then I created my own narrative and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, which is more stuff that I teach all of you guys about, right? We create our own self-fulfilling prophecy based on narratives that were bullshit to begin with from childhood or something we picked up from a toxic relationship or from being bullied or from a crappy work environment or even from like a business failure or because you invested in a coach and you didn't get anything out of it. So now you tell yourself, oh, well, that I can't do something like that again. And I make bad investments and I make poor choices. Part of growth and part of making big money, you can't not have pitfalls and mistakes. It's part of the gig. And if you're not willing to make mistakes and choose incorrectly and hire poorly and lose some money all along the way, you're not going to win. Think of gambling. Can you win money gambling without losing some? No. Can you end up having um, an amazing stock portfolio without losing some? No. It's no different than when it comes to business, but we forget these things that seem so obvious when I'm saying them to you. So I didn't read one page of, and there was probably 70 pages and I didn't read it. And a lot of these types of scammy people know their prey and know when someone's not likely going to read it. And guess what? My lawyers who listen will nod their heads. Uh, ignorance. Uh, what is this? What is this saying? It's ignorance is not an excuse in the court of law. You can't claim ignorance on taxes. You can't claim ignorance on contracts. You, it doesn't work like that. That's called learned helplessness and victimhood. And it doesn't work. I have, we have to own our part, not take out a bat on ourselves, but go, I didn't read it. And I, I put on my own agenda and I went on my own fantasy channel about it. So all, almost all that money was gone. And I was in shock. And it was interesting. One of my first thoughts, and I, I'm, I'm slowing down right here because I'm remembering where I was standing in my townhouse that I had at the time. And I went, I knew this was going to happen. Self-fulfilling prophecy. What did I tell you that I was thinking when I saw that in my bank account? Who am I to have this? I don't know what to do with it. Uh, how am I going to be able to manage it? I'm not qualified to manage this. I'm not smart enough to do this. I'm terrible at math, blah, 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 blah. Isn't it interesting? What we tell ourselves, what we believe, we end up acting out in action subconsciously. Maybe some of the things you do are conscious and you kind of know it when you look back, but most of it's subconscious, which is why it's very dangerous to go about business and things that you want to pursue alone because you can't see what you can't see. You know, I like to say when you're in, when you're in the picture, you can't, <laughs> you're like standing in the frame, you can't see the whole picture. And there, I had nothing to do. I had no recourse. Obviously, I was upset. And the response was something like, well, you know, this was a high risk, high reward, and this didn't pay off. And the, the thing that happened that day was I went, I have a problem. It was enough pain and shocked me enough to wake me up to go, I have a problem when it comes to money right? Like I can, I, I obviously can earn money, but I'm working so hard to earn it. And I just lost it. Like there's something I'm missing here. There's something I'm not seeing. And it's me. I, I'm the problem. It's me. I'm the common denominator. And that is when I started going heavy, heavy into law of attraction, manifestation and money mindset, money wounding work. I worked with a private um, mentor for eight years. I mean, I invested the money I did have left aside from what I needed to pay, you know, my mortgage and my car and such. But I invested my free time energetically, financially. I put that into healing and uncovering these wounds. So 
what would I tell you to do if I had to start all over? I would make sure that I prioritize working on this wounding, on this internal narrative. This is why I created my Make More Work Less money course. And if you've not done it, you are it's costing you money to not do it. And you'll see why, whether you've bought it and you just have it sitting there. And I know there's there's a lot of you that have it just sitting there because you started it and you're like, oh, Tiff's going deep here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that thing in my junk drawer, right? but you're losing money every single day you don't do it. And the money that you want, the option level cash, so you can say, fuck you to the job, fuck you to someone that you don't want to be with, but you don't feel you can leave because you don't have the money to leave. Fuck the system. Fuck that all the prices of hotel rooms are apparently now $1,000 a night, even for like a four-star hotel. Well, money buys options. That's the way we win in this game and we can't be controlled is to create more freedom for ourselves. But without you sacrificing your well-being and mental stability and joy, you do not have to do that. So in that course, that is the makings of everything that I have studied and tested and implemented and taught to well over 100,000, 150,000 people at this point. So I would prioritize doing that. And I'll make sure the link is in the show notes. It's projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash make more work less. And that it's also in the description. You got to find a way because you'll find a way to pay for other shit like gel nails, some shit you don't need on Amazon, chips, takeout. I would intentionally make sure that you're spending money on things that are going to make you money. That is called investing. Whether it is you're putting the money you have in an investment account so that money can make money and it can be a conservative account. And right now, I can speak for most of the global economy. When the interest rates are high, you can actually put money in these funds, even at your bank. And you're getting like 5%, 6% that you're, you're earning on it. So you might as well, you might as well put it in there. At least have every hundred dollars you put in, you're making it's six bucks. That's true passive, right? And investing in things and your time in things that are going to get you a return, whether it's on your health, it's on your joy, it's on your energy, it's on money. So like three days to make bank, it's free. I'm not charging you, but you have to invest your time and your energy. But you're going to obviously get so much more back. Same with the Make More Work Less guided workbook program, right? You, yeah, you're spending money, but you have lifetime access to it. And you are, without a doubt, you are going to transform your money story, which not only will change your life, it'll change the lives of everyone around you. And when you change your money story, look at the impact you can have. I wouldn't be able to build safe houses for women and children who are sex trafficked. I would not be able to contribute to that horrendous multi-trillion dollar industry of sex trafficking in order to help it. And, and same with all the other big donors, right? Thank God. And I, you have to look at it like that. This is, your, this is a very valuable currency. And what are you doing intentionally to set yourself up to bring in more of it? What I also did is when I, when I went pretty much down to back to square one, like I'm talking, this was money that I, from working at Starbucks, working as a cocktail waitress in college, I mean, I'm talking all that money I saved, all that was gone. And that's, but that's also when I started my first business because I knew to accumulate wealth faster, there is no way that was going to happen with me working for someone else. I'm not saying get up right now and quit your job, but you need to start something on the side and work to transition out, which is what I did. And if you're wanting an episode on that, one of my, I think that is one of my first podcast episodes on this show. 
and I would go listen to that. And if you want me to do like an updated version, I'm, I'm happy to do that as well. You just got to let me know with that one. And if you're loving this episode, take a screenshot, share it, share it with someone. It really helps propel the show forward. And it's a great, great way to share knowledge with someone of someone you to someone you care about that you really feel they can benefit from it. Just like if you recommend a book, right? Recommending a podcast is even more instantaneous. So I started really looking at how can I best leverage my skills and talents in order to make more money. So that's where I would start, whether it was today, whether what I did back then, how can I do that? And yeah, I would prefer it to be something that you enjoy, right? There's a lot of things you're good at, but you don't like doing, right? And that if you have to do that for a short period of time in order to transition or in order for that to be an investor in your business, then that's fine. But that's more of a short-term solution because you'll get burned out and resentful. You can end up creating a company doing something that you actually are good at that you hate or that drains you. So we don't want to do that world. That is not fun. So what, what, how can I leverage that? Right. How can I leverage in my case, like my scales, my sales skills, my communication skills, my ability to explain complex, even boring topics, make them interesting and explain them in a way that's not patronizing and that's understandable and engaging for people. And my first business was also leveraging my existing relationships in the medical world so so those people could be my new clients, right? And then I could go after those people and pitch relationships I already knew. So it's like, What areas are you really naturally good at? You don't have to be the best. And how can I leverage those to make some kind of business out of it? What can I do? The next thing I would do is I would immediately start building a community online. I would pick two main platforms that I felt that I enjoyed the most. And I would create content, 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 not just slapping stuff together, like great, helpful content with the focus of it being what can I give, not what can I get. And I would do that if this day and age, I would do TikTok and I would probably prioritize I would do TikTok and Instagram. I was I took a moment because I'm thinking, would I would I do YouTube? It would depend on someone's skill set. So for me, it'd be it would be TikTok and Instagram. If you don't follow me on both at Project Me with Tiffany, I would also do a podcast without a doubt. Again, it depends on someone's skill set, but I would go, how can I get in front of the most amount of people and make them aware? of my gifts, passions, and talents and skills that could help them make their life easier, help them get closer to their goal, alleviate pain. How can I get in front of the most people as possible with the least amount of um, energy and time output from me? And that's why I love being able to use content marketing. There is no way. I, I love it when you guys complain like, I'm stuck in the 200 view jail on on, on TikTok. And I, I get what you're saying. It, it is frustrating. It is an ego blow when we're kind of stuck and we're not we're not growing. Yeah, I don't love it every time I open up and look at my investment accounts. And if I have two months and it's flat growth, it's like, that's not as exciting as seeing it grow. But I mean, such as life. But you have to remember, you're still having 200 people, if we're using this example, seeing your stuff. For you to go and physically outreach to 200 people in real life, you would be exhausted. You couldn't do that in a week. You couldn't do that in two weeks. And the math is, and this has been studied by many marketing institutions, marketing, big marketing firms and universities, 3% of your audience is ready to buy from you at any given time. And I wish I, let's say your audience is 300. 
Okay. You have 300 people. That's it. Or you are starting from zero and you can grow it to three, which you can do that very quickly. I want to give you a, a reasonable number. So there's three people in there that are ready to buy from you. My ass would absolutely come up with a some kind of a service-based offer or a done-for-you offer that's high ticket. A lot of you end up starting with a low ticket thinking more people will buy it because it's low. If it's high, not as many people are going to pay me that amount. Who's going to pay me this? More money noise that needs to be cleared. It's much easier to actually sell something that's high ticket than low ticket. In my episode with Kayla Kraft, whose book just came out, her publisher and agent said, it is one of the hardest things to sell is a book. And I've, we say it in the episode. And I went, really? You would? I have so many damn books. I have books I haven't read, but I just bought it because I told myself I would read it. I thought that'd be an easy sell. It's actually not. And she, she, I think she said on the episode, it's easier to sell like a $25,000 um, program of hers than it is to sell like a, like 100 books. So it does go to my point. You have a small audience and a smaller pool of people to sell to. You have to do high ticket in order for you to make money and then use that money to invest in making more money. So I would come up with a service, whether it was, I mean, I'm not a tech person, but if I was, it would be like, I would do website design. What I did do with my first business that I still have, by the way, it's a digital marketing agency but that specializes in health products, pharmaceutical, and medical groups, physicians. So it's a niched agency. What I started with were doing Facebook ads because at the time, this was new. No one was doing it. The shit was like three cents, three cents a click. Okay. This was amazing. I used to make some major coin on ads. And People didn't know how to do it. They didn't know how to go about it. And did I fully know how to do it? No, but I was willing to learn. I invested in going to a couple weekend, I guess they're called like seminars and they weren't cheap. I put it on my credit card. No one would give me a business loan. Okay. So, and I had, I had no family to go to, to give me a loan. I, I don't have an uncle, rich uncle Joe. And I would go there to learn a high income generating skill. I knew this skill would pay off. Either I could run ads to things I sold myself, and I could also do ads for hospitals, ads for pharma, ads for um, a dental office, ads for a doctor, ads for a health supplement company. And so I did. And I was like one of the first to do it in that specific genre. And word spread because the results were there and it was incredible. Now, did I love doing them and managing them? No, it was very tedious. I liked creating the ad and the strategy, but the rest was tedious. And I was an asshole and I tried to do everything myself because I didn't want to have to pay someone to help me because I didn't want to give some of my profits away. I wanted to be able to retain all the profits because I was like, I need to have some money. Would have been much smarter for me to have hired someone to help me, even if it wasn't full time, because then I could have taken more clients and made more money. But I didn't know what the hell I was doing, which is why I'm telling you in this episode. So I would pick some kind of done for you service or like a one on one coaching, one on one consulting, um, something where people get it's something that is a lot of time that's involved, energy that's involved, because this is what they're going to pay the most for. And I would sell that over and over again. And if I was starting all over today, I had uh, my ego was in the way because I had no self-worth when I started my first business. But I would absolutely say to people with humility, I would say, do you know someone who could use blank service of mine? It's a new offer that I have. Um, who do you know that could use this particular service of mine? I have a new offer right now, or I have an offer right now. I'm taking on, you know, I'm looking to take on three more clients. And I would ask the people I know as an introvert, that is not my go-to move in general. 
But when you're in a spot where you're having to start all over and you want to grow fast, you've got to be willing to do really uncomfortable things to get super comfortable cash. (laughs) Okay. You just have to be willing to do it and be willing. Yeah. In the beginning. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to end up working more hours uh, because you don't know how to do things. So you're not as fast at it. Even if you were learning how to crochet. My grandmother was an incredible crocheter and I, I wanted her to show me in high school and then she would show me, but it was like, it was so hard and felt so tedious to pick up. So then I wouldn't practice it and I blew it off. But imagine if I had, I, I mean, who knows? I might have an Etsy business of, you know, crocheted beanies at this point, you know? You have to be willing to put in that extra time up front and things get easier and faster. Like my three days to make bank when I'm teaching you about creating content that converts into cash for any type of business, projectmeetwithtiffany.com forward slash make bank. Okay. Make sure you're signed up, even if you have to pause this and come back to it. And if there's no spots left, by the way, the page will say that it'll say that it's full, just FYI. So if I, when I teach you guys this, and even if you're working with me privately, okay, I only take four private clients at a time, but you're working with me privately. I'm right there with you. It's frustrating because I'm training your content muscle. This isn't built yet. You you don't have a knack for this yet. So it does take a little longer in the beginning until you get a, a hang of it. And then it becomes fun and then it becomes faster and then it becomes easier and it only gets more and more and more and more profitable because it requires less of your energy and time and therefore more fun. But a lot of people aren't willing to be in the learning phase in order to have the big payoff. So I would also make sure my mentality was kept in check about this stuff starting all over again. But you guys are all sitting on a gold mine. Even if you have zero social media, zero email list, none of it. Why? Because of your wisdom, because of your skill set, because of your intellectual property, because of the stuff that you've been through, because of your personality, because of your demeanor, because of the way you explain things, because of the way you storytell, every single person has something they can monetize. I think it'd be a really fun game. If I lined up 100 people on the beach, I don't care if they're 12 years old. And there are 12 years old making way more money than I am online showing people how to beat certain levels on video games. There's kids doing unboxings of toys and playing with toys. There's Lego master teenagers. There are people who are, you guys have to go on TikTok live and just scroll the lives and you'll start laughing. You'll go, oh my God. There are, there's people doing live um, astrology readings, making major coin, getting gifts sent to them. There's, I saw a lo- person doing live hypnos- hypnosis. Um, there's people doing live relationship advice. I could go on and on. Go look and spark your creativity because you're thinking you don't really have anything and you're telling yourself, I'm not sure what to do or what else I can do or what I can do next. But it actually is all within you. You just needed someone to help prompt you. So last note, even though I lost all that money and that that I couldn't get that back, what it did is it was the catalyst for me to learn a different way of operating, a different way of me doing things and learning a skill that I now make millions and millions and millions of dollars teaching all of you and empowering you to make money that allows you to have the options and the freedom that you deserve and that allow you to live a limitless life versus a trapped life. So that thing had to happen that was horrible, that was humbling, that was shocking, all of those things that was part of the greater plan of the universe. So when you have some shit that's happened to you, I promise you, you might not know today why it might take years later. It might take decades later. It's all part of the divine plan. And I'm not saying, yeah, I wish I'm so thankful that happened. I'm not, I'm not going to be one of those people, but I can see why that was part of the divine plan because I was meant to teach and help you 
with what I'm doing right now, right here today. And I wouldn't have had the wherewithal, the skill set, the knowledge, the story, the humility, and the deep way of emotionally connecting and understanding you if I hadn't gone through that. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you. Can't wait to see you next week in three days to make bank online. Make sure you go grab your seat. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others. 